Hi everyone, this is Keith Severson, President and Owner of Fiduciary Management Group. I'm happy to announce our merger uh, with LifeWorks Advisors. One of the main reasons for this partnership is that I've noticed that the needs for our current clients and that the needs for their children and grandchildren are different. And what this uh, partnership will do, it will allow us to serve both the needs of our, our current clients and the needs of the younger generation also. Hello friends, clients, and fellow financial advisors. My name is Ron Bullis and I'm the CEO and founder of LifeWorks Advisors. I'm really excited to be in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're actually in a suburb called Bloomington, just outside of there, to talk with Keith Severson, the president of Fiduciary Management Group. Keith and his firm are going to be partnering with LifeWorks um, starting here in the next couple of weeks, and we just thought it would be fun for our clients and advisors that follow us to learn a little bit more about his firm, why he chose to partner with LifeWorks, and his vision for the future of his company and the industry. Keith, it's great to be here. Good to be here. Thanks, Ron. So let's start with an easy question. Um, talk to us a little about your professional background. I know you were a wholesaler for years, but kind of just give us a, a quick peek into your professional background. Yeah, I started in 86, 87 as a financial advisor with then... Uh, the I was six years old. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> called IDS, which is now Ameriprise. So financial planning was my background. And... Uh, I, I can remember when the Dow hit a thousand. Wow! Yeah, and then um, uh, went on a hunting trip in October of '87, and we were driving home. Stopped at a gas station to get something to drink before we continued home, and that's when I saw the crash of '87 hit. So that was my humble beginnings as an advisor. Wow! Yeah, what was it like? The uh, the most violent crash in the market? October eighty seven. October, uh, you know, Black Tuesday of eighty seven. Mm -hmm. um, I started as an advisor in the beginning of two thousand eight, <laughs> right after uh, the start of the, the great financial crash, crisis. Yeah, yeah and, and I had people at the time tell me I was nuts. But I guess when you uh, jump in during a market correction, there's nowhere to go but but up. Yeah, it's tough to start with a zero and yeah. trying to build a book right uh, right then. But in retrospect, it was there a better time ever? to start investing? Probably not. Probably not. So you started as a financial advisor back in the mid 80s. You then transitioned into being a wholesaler for you know a number of years. Talk to us about that transition and, and what your role was like there. Yeah, as a, as a financial advisor, you know, all, all these firms have their pluses and minuses and I always thought there was a way to do it better. Mm -hmm. So I went from IDS to Merrill Lynch and then from Merrill Lynch to one of the very first uh, U.S. bank reps. So the banking program was just starting. It was called First Bank back then. And um, what kind of drove me out of there was having 3,000 accounts, no computer, and uh, it was just chaos. Wow. Uh, trades not being processed quick. So technology back office just made it a nightmare. And, and kind of by accident, I became a wholesaler. Hmm. Somebody said, you should talk to a friend of mine. I flew to San Francisco, interviewed, and they gave me a job as a wholesaler for federated funds. Okay. Yeah. Now, in that wholesaling rep role, and, and LifeWorks has uh, you know wholesalers and reps for funds and money managers and SMAs and stuff that, that visits all the time, you were calling on advisors and, and essentially helping them in a lot of ways, coaching them to you know, better investment decisions for their clients, you know, successful um, you know, portfolios. Talk to us a little about what that was like working with thousands of advisors. Yeah, well, what, uh, what helped me was knowing what advisors wanted to hear, mm. which gave me, I think, an advantage uh, to kind of say, why should you use this product versus another product? So that I kind of sat in their chair and uh, could speak their language. But uh, what you'll soon find out as a fund wholesaler is that a lot of these funds are the same. A large cap growth fund is a large cap growth fund. So to get business, you had to p provide value, which was how could I help you uh, improve your business, uh, communicate with clients better, you know, attach a story to why you would use this and not this and that. So uh, that helped me a lot. Um, you're kind of like a uh, advisor coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my uh, my coach for years, uh, Ray Scalafani, who started ClientWise. I mean, he uh, I think he has four thousand something like this advisors in this program. He started out as a wholesaler mm -hmm. uh, years before, and found that through helping advisors become more successful, he built a pretty 
um, interesting curriculum and niche, right, around coach them to success. What was the catalyst then? So you were a financial advisor, successful, transitioned into being a, a wholesaler rep, successful there, and you did that for a number of years. Talk to us a little about what the catalyst was to shifting to you purchasing fiduciary management group and becoming uh, you know, an independent fiduciary and financial advisor for your clients. Yeah, kind of along my wholesaling journey, uh, I met a girl and got married. <laughs> and then, uh, and as one would do is have children. So I had a son, and I, I think he was probably four, and I came home and he was playing a t-ball game. And I looked out there and looked at my wife, I got, oh my gosh, I have the only child that can't throw or catch. And, and I, I, at, at then it kind of hit me, I've been gone too long. And so I wanted to restructure my lifestyle uh, to be home more. And I still get a little emotional about it because it was yeah. just like, uh, it hit me like a, a ton of bricks. So from then on out, after knowing a lot of advisors, I kind of knew what I wanted in a book and then kind of set out to, to find one. Mm -hmm. I would imagine too that you had also seen uh, to borrow a title from a Clint Eastwood movie, right? The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Uh, okay. I would imagine that you had a very interesting optics into different types of practices, different uh, things advisors were doing or not doing uh, really well, right? It's all over the map, you know. It, it would be like any profession, attorney, realtor. Anyway, there's some very, very exceptional and good advisors, mm -hmm. uh, wirehouse brokers, etc. And then there are not. And um, there was kind of a saying in our industry, uh, the 80-20 rule might, should probably be the 90-10 rule. Mm, sure. That was well known in the... Yeah, Pareto's law, the 80-20 rule, yes, maybe uh, it's 90-10. As you're trying to you know, be the capital raising arm for the, the money managers, you would get 80% of the money from 6 to 10% of the advisors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, and the sophistication level um, ranged widely. What I love about that, the, the story and how you came to be, I mean, what I find with successful advisors like yourself is we all have different stories and how we became advisors. Your experience in being able to see what great advisors were doing and what not so great advisors were doing and even inside of different systems, right, um, large firms, small firms, independent firms, led you here to Fishery Management Group and talk to us a little about uh, that transition. So you purchased Fishery Management Group three years ago, something like this. Just talk to us a little bit about, you know, what that transition's been like and, and how you've, you know, been leading your team here. Yeah, I've kind of uh, been in the background a little bit observing how the team was working and uh, saw where things needed improvement and what didn't. And uh, like so many people on the independent side, it was the technology side that was uh, very was lacking. In fact, uh, when we first got here, they were gonna discontinue supporting some of the software that FMG was originally using. And so the first thing I did was try to build a, a technology stack. Yep. And, uh, and that's a whole different rabbit trail, mm -hmm. as you know, from listening to your interviews that was pretty interesting, mm -hmm. yeah. From talking with you about the history of FMG and you know the long tenure that it has serving its clients, um, successfully helping clients manage their money and their investments, you know, that's a really great story. As you've now been running this organization for a handful of years, what are some things that you found to be foundational that you plan to keep Right and use as the, the, the building blocks as you continue to grow the firm, serve your clients across multiple generations? Yeah, one of the great things uh, my predecessor did, Steve Peterson, who founded this in, I believe, 82, wow. was, uh, was buy really good companies. He wasn't a trader. He held them through thick and thin. And uh, by having those great, strong names in their portfolio, these people have got unbelievably great returns by not chasing not, trends and not chasing fads no and, yeah no and so um, probably one of the biggest problems FMG has is capital gains you know just yeah. two bigger returns some of the returns are unbelievable mm -hmm. and I, I think having 
high quality, good investments is kind of the cornerstone of FMG. Yeah, and even in your name, right, Fiduciary Management Group is uh, the implied sense of like discipline in terms of how you guys help your clients approach investing. And big big word in today's industry. Yeah. Uh, Steve was way up ahead of his time choosing the name. And um, when I purchased the place, I thought, wow, maybe we could change the name. I said, no, yeah. I, I, what's better? Yeah. This is going to be, mm -hmm. this was uh, uh, light years ahead of its time when he, when he named it. So I thought that stays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you mentioned this, let's just pick at it a little bit. Why do you believe it's important to operate as a fiduciary for your clients? And what, what do you see are some of the unique things relative to the other advisors and firms that you saw across your career? Yeah, I think doing the best thing for your client is the best way to do it. Um, I've seen other advisors kind of sell things for commissions or um, advisors would ask me as a wholesaler, what's the R RTA, return to advisor, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, that, Got yeah, it. that's out there. It exists, it's real. And I know, even from as a very young advisor, if you maybe um, put people in uh, an investment they weren't 100% comfortable, you usually ended up backing out of it anyway. So doing what's in the best interest of the client uh, has always been the best thing to do. So Keith, you've been sharing with you know, your clients and the LifeWorks clients and, and other advisors that are watching what some of the key foundational things are for FMG, you know, being a fiduciary, being independent, doing what's in your client's best interest, having a really disciplined and sound investment strategy. With all of the change from technology, uh, you know, the global pandemic, um, civil unrest, open borders, there's a lot of things going on in the world that create unease. Um, and there's also just a lot of moving pieces. Talk to us a little bit about your vision for the future of FMG and what you hope to um, maybe become. Like, what's your vision for FMG? Uh, great question, and, and I have thought about it. And a um, um, couple things. One, um, I wanted a place that really took care of clients, and I didn't want to have 2,000, 3,000 clients. And one of the things that attracted me uh, to FMG was the amount of clientele and the uh, actual investable assets there. Um, two, uh, along my wholesaling journey, I met a lot of advisors who didn't like where they worked. And I thought, what if I created a place where everyone's happy, right? Why not come to work and enjoy it? Yeah. It'd be great, here's a place to land. Novel idea. But Novel idea. And third, um, I'm on the parent advisory board at my son's private school. And one of the things that we're trying to do there is how do you educate children for jobs we don't know will even exist when they get out? So kind of third is uh, to create a place for my son to come work if he so desires this is something he would like to do. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, uh, finding next generation talent is something I want to do too. As you, you know, I'm not a spring chicken anymore, and we tell clients we're going to take care of them and their children and their children, and you know we can't all live forever, but FMG could continue on forever, and using your platform uh, should enable us to do that very, very easily. Yeah, I mean, I get the opportunity to interview lots of advisors and industry leaders through our podcast and just just through advisors joining our platform and. I can tell you that there is a significant gap in next-gen talent in our industry. The average age of a financial advisor is close to 60, which in and itself isn't a problem. But when we look at the number of advisors in the industry and then the number that are, say, under the age of 35, it's about 10% of the advisor population is under the age of 35. Right. Right. So it's, it's a really powerful thing and I think an important thing to have in your vision for the fiduciary management group to recruit next-gen talent to be a place where people enjoy working mm -hmm. um, and that they have the ability to do it as a fiduciary, right? I mean, I have my very strong biases about working in our clients' best interests in 100% of the things we do and avoiding conflicts of interest. So I think that that you know aligns with what I would say is 
the right recipe for success in the future. Yeah, and without a doubt, uh, the independent RAA space is the place for the more sophisticated, that I say better, yep. advisors that don't need the broker dealer mm -hmm. or the bank mm -hmm. kind of looking over their shoulder and telling them what products they can and can't use for their clients. So mm -hmm. it's the reason this is the fastest growing space in our industry. The industry as, as the predecessor um, to this firm knew and, and even you know when you started as an advisor and as a wholesaler, right? I believe that the industry is completely different today than it was then in terms of client expectations, what we need to do as advisors to serve and support our clients and their families across multiple generations. You've been around the industry a long time and we've already talked about you having seen you know the good, the bad, and the ugly. Talk to us about that change as you've seen it from the old industry to where we're at now and, and where we're going and how you see serving clients through Fiduciary Management Group there. Uh, yeah, and uh, one of the things I did when COVID hit, we moved into this office and then COVID hit and then... Work we, from home. We work from home and, and weren't bringing people in. Yeah. And uh, so I took some time and really uh, did some in-depth study on our industry and kind of came to some conclusions and that's the the services and um, value proposition that when Steve started this that he offered or the industry I grew up in is kind of gone. It's gone, it's a dinosaur. And then from meeting with new people, I kind of learned they're looking for something different than what we did in the past. Kind of the planning is becoming more in vogue and, and these kids want some more sophistication in planning where maybe the current clientele has already made it, would not. So how to do both of those led me to um, finding you. We know that you know being an independent fiduciary is important to you, having sound investment strategies. Uh, you've been on the, the process the last couple of years of adding you know, modern technology and improving you know, your firms that you can serve your clients and their kids and grandkids right? You're looking out multiple generations uh, for your clients, which is an unusual thing for a lot of advisors. But talk to us a little about why you decided to partner with LifeWorks and what you think it means for your clients. Uh, I think it's going to be great. First of all, nothing really changes much at all other than um, LifeWorks is our IRA versus Strategic Wealth being our old IRA. But then you're able to offer some things we didn't have at the old IRA, such as the planning software, um, the estate planning software, um, the video marketing, et cetera, et cetera, that I thought would be really beneficial uh, to my clientele as, um, as unfortunate as we have seen some clients pass and then the transfer of the money to their heirs. The heirs are looking for something a little bit different than probably what their parents would be as would be normal. And so, uh, trying to go through the sea of planning options and software, um, I, I just thought what you guys have done was have already solved for that. And it was uh, more efficient and affordable for us to partner with you mm -hmm. than to go out and for me to do this on my own. Yeah, and one of the things that LifeWorks that we are 100% committed to, and, and our clients have heard me say this over and over and over again, and I'm gonna keep repeating it is, we are building a firm intentionally to serve our clients and their families across multiple generations. And what that means is we have to help our clients navigate more than just how to invest in the market. We have to help them build really good estate plans because when the family member dies and the trust that hasn't been dusted off for 20 years now gets dusted off and everybody's like, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. um, it's real work and it's meaningful work and having integrated tax planning is becoming more and more important as each passing administration and Congress decides to change laws and then bureaucrats change those, like being able to do really effective tax planning in-house for our clients, which we do, uh, is something that allows us to serve, again, the client and their, their kids and grandkids. Um, you mentioned the things that aren't changing. So your client's custodial accounts will be at Schwab. Stays the same. Their account numbers stay the same. Their logins stay the same. Mm -hmm. You and your team here at Fiduciary Management Group, 
stays the same, Yes. right? Um, what you're doing is you're partnering with a firm that's going to bring some modern tools and education and resources to improve your client's position. Yeah, just to add massive value, yeah. a better service proposition, and um, and some tools we currently don't have mm -hmm. that uh, we're, I mean, I'm excited to kind of share those mm -hmm. as we meet with everybody here um, in 22. So talk to us about what the next couple weeks and months might look like um, for your clients. Um, are, are you going to be reaching out and scheduling in-person meetings? Talk to us about what you expect the next, you know, two, four, six, eight weeks to look like for your clients. Yeah, I, I anticipate calling everyone. You'll get a phone call from me and then and kind of give you a heads up on what to expect. I think we're going to get a digital envelope and you can docu-sign some documents mm -hmm. and... Um, and then just walk you through the mechanics of how this transition will take place. Perfect. It should be very seamless and simple. And then later we'll schedule some appointments where we can start um, going over what new things we have to offer. Yeah, so talk to us a little about 2022 then. Diving into building some you know, more holistic financial planning, estate planning, tax planning. Just maybe riff on that for a minute. Talk to us about what you see doing for your clients in the, you know, the, the coming months. Yeah, we'll have financial planning capabilities uh, once the, the transition is complete. And I fully intend to offer that to everyone. Um, whether you want to do it or not is completely up to you. Also, uh, LifeWorks provides some investment strategies that we may want to take a look at. It could be appropriate for some or, or not. And, um, and then just kind of, kind of set up a game plan going forward. And my vision is to have quarterly meetings, right? More or less. So let's just meet on a quarterly basis, make sure we're on top of everything so nothing falls through the cracks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, aligned on the financial plan, the tax plan, the yes. estate strategy, and making sure it's all connected together. Yeah, I, I, I anticipate um, having more quarterly appointments to make sure we continue giving people the same personal, high-quality service that we've been doing in the future, um, but probably more in a more systematic format. Ron, I was wondering if you could, uh, just for my clientele, give us a brief synopsis about LifeWorks um, what your team does and kind of how you got to this point. Today. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I love sharing the story about LifeWorks. So I started as a financial advisor at a large national insurance company in 2008. Uh, February 13 of 2008, I think, was the day I signed my contract. Right in the middle of the great financial crisis and the chaos. So it was a very interesting time to start as an advisor. Um, spent almost a decade there, met my current business partner, Kurt Van Dyken, who's our chief compliance officer and co-founder at LifeWorks. And one of the things we started realizing after we had been in the industry a while was that there was a disconnect between what our clients were telling us they wanted and how we saw them being served by you know, large firms and the average advisor. So we started by asking three very unique questions, or what I would call simplistic questions. The first one was, Mr. and Mrs. Client, do you have a well thought out, clear, written plan that connects your financial assets to what matters most? And when we asked that question over thousands of prospects and clients over a little over a year and a half, the answer we got 98% of the time was no. Or the second most common answer was, I'm not really sure what that would even look like. The second question we asked is, do you have a financial advisor or a life insurance broker, stock broker, certified financial planner, or something like this that you've worked with either now or in the past? And the answer was generally yes. And the third question was this, do you know how much you're paying your advisor, what you're paying them for, and any other revenue that they're making off of the relationship with you? And you could guess the answer to that question, right? Most of them were like, no idea. What became really apparent to us was that what clients really wanted and needed was a good, sound financial plan that they could then use to drive the wisest decision for their family around things like transferring assets to the next generation, how to spend and live in the present, but yet still make wise decisions for the future. 
And so we left a large national firm to start LifeWorks with a very singular focus in mind, which was to build a independent fiduciary firm, so it's called in the industry an RIA, that served our clients across multiple generations and did it in a very transparent way. So we said we have to change the fee structure, so we have a monthly fixed fee that we run for our clients. We then said we have to build technology that allows us to serve our clients today and then also their kids and grandkids in the future. Because as you said earlier in the interview, you recognize that in your clients too. What you know, the baby boomers and maybe even older generations need looks vastly different than what a 30-year-old next-gen wealth creator needs and wants, right? Mm -hmm. So we recognized we had to build technology, which led us to creating our own software platform that brought all these things together. Um, and so what does that mean for LifeWorks Now? Well, LifeWorks Now is a, about 25 uh, people in our firm. We have people from uh, MIT that focus on our investment strategies and some of our hedging strategies. They're called quantitative uh, investors. We have uh, institutional asset managers, portfolio managers, financial advisors, CPAs, uh, a collection of different specialists and professionals that sole purpose and objective is to help our advisors, like yourself, Keith, serve their clients and their families in a way that's very unique and very personalized to them. And that's really my passion as the, the CEO and founder of LifeWorks. I recognize that if every client's needs are unique, what that means is every advisor and firm like Fiduciary Management Group has a collection of unique families that have unique needs, challenges, and objectives. And so trying to build a one-size-fits-all investment strategy is a terrible idea. Trying to build a one-size-fits-all wealth management firm is an even more terrible mm -hmm. idea. My mom, who's a grammarian and English major, is probably chuckling right now because I probably could have been more articulate there with that. But the idea being that LifeWorks is the system infrastructure and backbone that builds really great financial advisors and empowers you to serve your clients even better than you are now. And that's really our sole mission and focus when we wake up every day and come to work. And that's what I'm excited about is that a lot of the stuff I won't have to worry about and time I don't have to use is being done by, by your people. And we can focus solely on what we should be doing and that's the client. Exactly.